Josh just got a really important role to play um, in terms of um, uh, where we go in this in this carbon reduced world that we need to head to going forward. And, and our role, of course, is is uh, is the role of the network provider. Um, our the world is rapidly moving. It's over the last 10 years we've moved to what we call IP networks, in other words, the internet, and sending all of our um, traffic, our banking, our entertainment and other things over IP networks. Um, and Telstra's got a huge role to play in that because most of that network traffic happens over, over Telstra's networks. A very important thing that Telstra will be doing over the next 20 years is building the next uh, generation network as we called it. It's been called variously FTTN, meaning fibre to the node, or NGN, next generation network. What it really means is that we will gradually replace copper in our network uh, with fibre. And as we do that, that will provide effectively unlimited bandwidth uh, to people. So in 20 years' time, I think bandwidth will be a bit like electricity. You don't think today, how much electricity have I got to my, uh, to my house? You've just got electricity. You turn on the light and it works. You've got sufficient electricity, more than you need. And I think that's where we're going to go with bandwidth as well. And as we get there, we'll find that more and more of the entertainment, the health services, the banking, the commercial services um, that we use will travel over these networks. And so we'll be using the networks, um, not petrol engines um, uh, or any other kind of engine, to, uh, uh, to, to, to undertake the transactions in entertainment that we, that we need. Um, you know, we'll see things develop like um, very significant large scale video conferencing. So uh, one, of, one of the ideas that's been um, sort of promoted is, is the idea that I sit in my sitting room, I've got a, a wall. Um, the wall shows TV, it shows the internet, but I decide to ring my dad in Adelaide and he's got a wall that's just the same as my wall and suddenly I'm looking into his, into his lounge room. And those are the kinds of things, which I really do think we will be doing over the next 20 years, but they'll require um, you know, really high levels of bandwidth. But if I can suddenly kind of teleport into Dad's uh, lounge room in Adelaide, then I don't need to jump on a plane and uh, you know, burn carbon um, to go and see him. Look, Australia generally is going to have to undertake um, a lot of change. All of, our, all of our institutions and all of our organisations, including Telstra, uh, will have to undertake very significant cultural change as we try to move towards a carbon um, reduced future, which we need to do to save the planet. I mean, it's just abundantly clear that's what we need to do. Luckily at Telstra, um, we've already been undertaking a lot of change in the last um, three or four years. I mean, we're a big, um, very large uh, engineering based company. and We've been a network company for a hundred years. And, and that um, has in the past provided us with a culture which is very sort of stable and not particularly good at changing. In the last three or four years, probably starting really about 10 years ago with the advent of the internet, but we've seen an increasing rate of change in Telstra. And we're now getting pretty good at change actually for a large organisation. And I think that, that we're, we're, we're probably not quite there yet, but we're becoming a role model for other organisations in Australia. You really have to embrace change. You really have to be prepared to change. And um, that goes you know, from the absolute top to the bottom and all the way through. Um, and if we're going to do the things that are required to provide our kids with a real future, then all of our institutions in Australia need to make this sort of serious change to a reduced carbon future. <laughs> my generation, of course, my personal generation is, is the baby boomer generation and, and um, <laughs> I mean boomers are a nuisance I think to everybody else. The Gen X and Gen Ys are always a bit irritated by boomers. Um, but the truth is, is that right now um, it's our day. So that the <laughs> The boomers, if you like, are the senior managers of the, uh, of the world uh, at the moment. And that's not a bad thing because, remember, boomers grew up through the sort of 60s and 70s and embraced change in that time so that we are a generation of change. Um, we're not a conservative generation. Um, we're the generation which um, basically got us in and out of Vietnam. We're the generation that, um, uh, that has embraced uh, change for the, very much for the better on behalf of women and the baby boomer generation has been on about this environmental thing you know, since the late 60s. So it's, it's, not, it's kind of old news for us, if you like. It's, it's the way we've tried to live our life as we've, as we've grown up and grown older and, and grown into, into management. So I hope that the baby boomer generation um, uh, in 20 years' time is seen as an absolute change agent um, generation. And I hope that what happens is that we 
put stuff in place which the others that have come uh, along behind us uh, pick up because uh, you know, in, to, in terms of picking up, the, the guys that come behind the boomers, the, the X's and Y's and the millennials as they're called, um, these are the people who really now need to implement things. We can sort of start the cultural ball rolling but, but it really needs to be implemented by the people who come along behind us because if we don't do it then um, you know, our kids and our grandkids uh, are going to have a very miserable looking future on this planet.